With the NFL draft approaching, the dynasty running back landscape is set to undergo a major shift. In this video, I'll reveal the top five running backs you should be selling right now to maximize your trade value. The Jaguars still don't want Travis Etienne handling all of the work, and it's becoming obvious why. After finishing as the 2023 RB6, some people might be surprised that I'm saying sell Travis Etienne. But those who drafted him remember all too well that it wasn't all plain sailing in 2023 and in 2022. In 2022, Etienne averaged 14 points per game and 6.2 yards per carry over the first half of the season, and then averaged 10.2 the rest of the way. In 2023, Etienne again thrived over the opening half of the season, averaging 20.5 points per game weeks 1 to 8, and then averaging 13.1 for the rest of the season. The Jags clearly wanted Tank Bigsby to carve out a role to help keep Etienne fresher. And while that didn't happen last year, the Jags are already bigging up Tank Bigsby's chances to play more in 2024. It also wouldn't be surprising if they had another running back in the draft who could eat into Etienne's touches. Etienne wasn't drafted by this regime. He still hasn't had his fifth year option picked up yet. It's not expensive at $6 million, but the Jags aren't showing us the signs that they truly believe in Etienne long term. There's been no talk about a contract extension unless you really, really believe in Travis Etienne. Now is a good time to get out. Everyone thinks this running back draft class stinks. And this is a good time to take advantage of increased valuations on veterans. You can see on screen here, these are our trade values here at the Fantasy Sanctuary. We've got them at the 108 in Superflex leagues, which is the same as Keep Trade Cut in single QB leagues. That jumps to the 104. That price point is really interesting because in most Superflex rookie mock drafts right now, you'll find that there's a real tier break around the 109 pick. So the 108 is going to be a position where people are valuing it well. There are no running backs who would go in that range in a Superflex rookie mock draft. So if someone wants a running back, they're going to have to pay for him. In terms of trade offers, I would do for Etienne right now. I would try and sell him for the 109. See if you can just get in at the end of that tier that we mentioned in those rookie mock drafts. I would offer Travis Etienne plus a mid-second round pick for Drake London. I'm trying to acquire Drake London as many places as possible right now before he makes that jump to the true elite tier. And packaging up Etienne with a second round pick feels like a good way to move away from a running back. Alternatively, if you wanted to gain a little bit more, you could go for Christian Kirk plus a mid-second round pick. That makes plenty of sense. Currently, he is the wide receiver one for the Jags. Again, we've seen what a volume hog he can be. And this would just help you get away slightly from Etienne, but still have some exposure to this Jaguars offense, which we still think is going to be pretty good. Player number two in just a second. But first, hit that subscribe button. We've got rookie profiles dropping daily. We've got rookie mocks all over the place. We've got a great guest coming up over the next few weeks. You are not going to want to miss out on all the great content that we are going to get you set up to win with this year in 2024. After an acrimonious contract dispute and an ambiguous injury that kept Jonathan Taylor out for the first month of 2023 season, he finally got his contract. He got a three-year, $42 million deal. Missing that time at the beginning of a month, it opened up a door for Zach Moss. Moss outproduced Jonathan Taylor across the course of the season in yards per carry, evaded tackles per game, big run rate, rushing yards before contact, and Moss just dominated in games without Taylor, scoring 17.9, 20.7, 22.5, and 33.5 PPR points. That made it tough for Jonathan Taylor to resume workhorse duties when he was healthy with Taylor dropping to a 61.7% opportunity share. You compare that to 67% in 2022 and 69% in 2021. That difference might not sound huge, but going from 22 touches per game to 17 makes it so much harder to be the true top-tier running back that we want him to be. The other knock against Jonathan Taylor is that we saw him and Anthony Richardson on the field together for just 22 snaps in 2023. And he's only had one season with 40 or more receptions. So we've never really seen him earn targets at such a high rate that we feel he can overcome Anthony Richardson probably preferring to run than check it down. Jonathan Taylor's value is a bit higher than Travis Etienne. You can see we've got him at the 107. If you want access to all our Dynasty rankings, trade value calculator, hit the join button down below. You've got so many Dynasty resources there. Keep Trade Cut, have him slightly higher at the 106. And then in single QB formats, you're looking at the 103. The trade offers that stand out to me, 
I would be swapping Jonathan Taylor straight up for Jalen Waddle. I think Jalen Waddle's going to have a good bounce back season, stay healthier, be a big part of what Miami are planning to do around Tua and will be very impressive this year. I would swap Jonathan Taylor for Deontay Johnson and the 203 or a similar pick around that range. I think we're going to see Deontay Johnson have another big year in terms of earning targets. Bryce Young should be able to take a step forward. And if you're looking to move off a running back, you know, you're not going to get a one-for-one -one swap of an elite wide receiver necessarily all the time for him. But this feels like a fair deal. Lastly, if you want to gain a bit more pick value and take a speculative shot on a running back, Jalen Warren plus the 201 feels completely fair. And I think that gives you access still to be able to fill that running back role if you feel like that's going to become too much of a weakness on your roster. But it also gives you a really good pick at the 201. There are aspects of Devin Achan's game that would be sustainable. His speed undoubtedly is going to help him create impressive runs over the next few years, particularly given that he's in one of the most creative and diverse offensive schemes in the league. But it seems incredibly unlikely that Achan will continue to rush for eight yards per carry. You know, that was by far the highest amount of any running back last year with over 50 rushing attempts. Keaton Mitchell was the only other running back to have over eight yards per carry on 30 or more attempts. We just don't see numbers like that very often. Achan, when you go back and look at his numbers from his rookie season, they are impressive. But much of it stems from that ludicrous game against the Broncos. From week 11 onwards, Achan was the RB24, averaging 12.7 PPR points per game. Achan also managed to play above 30% of snaps in only eight games last year. The knock on him coming out was at 5'9", 188 pounds. He'd be too small to hold up in the NFL. And we're already seeing that come into play. Raheem Mostert just signed a two-year extension, but Achan is still being priced up as if he's a true elite running back. He's ranked as RB7 on Keep Trade Cut. You have to be able to take advantage of that if you're not in a win-now position and don't feel like a Chan is an integral part of your roster. We have him valued at the 109. Keep Trade Cut are a couple of picks ahead of us at the 107. And then in single QB format, you can see it down at 104. I would trade Devon Achan right now for Rashi Rice plus for 207 or a similar pick in that range. I would trade Devon Achan for Devonta Smith straight up. Again, that's a good one to do if you... Don't feel like you're contending and you want to move and build around wide receivers instead. Or if we're talking straight picks and somebody doesn't want to pony up with like 107, 106 range, 108, what about the 111 and the 210? There's going to be plenty of good depth in this, this year's draft. It is such a talent-rich draft and having a couple of picks like that feels very good if you need to build in a different way. The New York Giants gave Devin Singletary a three-year, 16.5 million contract, 9.75 million in guarantees, and he does have history with Brian Dayball from their time together in Buffalo. So why is he a sell? Well, for a start, is Brian Dayball going to be in New York for a long time? I haven't looked at the odds, but I wouldn't be surprised if Brian Dayball is one of those coaches who is among the favorites to be fired in season and early on. Singletary also, he had an impressive end to the season with the Texans, but he's coming off a career low 4.2 yards per carry in 2023, as well as the second worst receiving success rate of his career. Singletary took over the Texans' backfield, seeing over 19 touches per game from week 10 onwards. But the Texans knew he wasn't a good bet long term. They let him walk and brought in Joe Mixon, who everybody expected the Bengals to cut, Instead, if you want to hear more about Joe Mixon, check out the Dynasty Buys video, which is linked in the description below. Singletary broke more long runs in 2023 than Joe Mixon with a big run rate of 5.2%. But that's not necessarily the most sticky stat year to year. And now Singletary goes from the Shanahan run scheme that they run in Houston, which is always favorable to running backs. We always see them have good success rate. And now Singletary's going to New York who had the third worst offensive line in PFF run blocking grades last year. The Giants brought in help on the offensive line with John Runyon and Jermaine Illuminor. Illuminor ranked 62nd in block rate, Runyon ranked 240th. So these issues are far from fixed straight away. And that's before we even get into the issues at quarterback and how this offense might struggle in general this year. This is a good selling window for a player you might struggle to get any kind of value on in a year's time. The valuation on Devin Singletary, you can see a massive range across the industry. We here value him at the 203 because he is going to get a lot of touches in New York. We can see that other sites keep trade cut value him at the 301. He's a good player to throw out in packages or to just get a sense for the value among your league mates. 
with Singletary having a massive range in value, these are some trade offers I'd just be throwing out there, seeing what you can kind of get as a nibble from other managers. Could you do Chris Godwin straight up? If you need a quarterback, could you swap him for Gardner Minshew straight up in a super flex league? Or perhaps just saying, okay, I'll take two late seconds to get a deal done and be able to move on from him and then use those picks to just replenish and gain a bit more youth on your roster. If you want access to more Dynasty content, hit the join button below, choose the Silver Sunset tier, our middle tier. It'll get access to our rookie guide, You'll get access to a Dynasty trade calculator, Dynasty rankings, so much more stuff in there that Rich has put in, as well as all of my best ball content in there, exclusive leagues, as well as my rankings, and so much more. We will get you set up to win in 2024. Zamir White is an incredibly fragile Dynasty asset. Over the final three weeks of the season, White averaged 95.0 rushing yards per game, the fourth most among running backs. But his 1.7% touchdown rate was the second lowest among any running backs to score a touchdown in that spell. White saw 19.7 rush attempts per game in those three weeks. But he only reached 15 PPR points in two games, finishing as the RB12, RB16, and RB16. So that feels kind of like where his ceiling's going to be at. He might be a mid-range RB2. But this is also a point in the year where a lot of better running backs were dealing with injuries, weren't necessarily playing as many snaps. So is he going to be able to sustain that kind of pace throughout a season? I'm a little pessimistic. The numbers he put up are not massively impressive. And if the Raiders are looking to use Gardner Minshew at quarterback or a rookie, then they'll probably pass slightly more than they did in 2023 when they had the fourth lowest rate of passing on first downs across the league. When Alexander Madison was signed, people took it as a sign that White's value was fine. But if Raiders had another running back in the draft, which they could easily do, then if things turn into a three-way committee, it's going to get very messy very quickly. We're a little bit ahead of keep trade cut on our value here. We value him around for 112, but obviously that could change quickly. Keep trade cut at the 206. And in single quarterback league, the 108. So if you feel like you know that there's a manager in your league who values Zemir White highly, now's a good time to send an offer, see if you can make a move happen before the draft. With Stefan Diggs being traded this week, he feels like the kind of player that we can target to buy low. People don't know how to value him at the minute after that trade. And I would do Zemir White straight up for Stefan Diggs quite happily. Keenan Allen, if you've got a team that feels like it needs guaranteed production this year, I'd take Keenan Allen's production over Zemir White's. And then lastly, Jake Ferguson and a 212. If you need a tight end, you want to move away from a risky running back, Jake Ferguson looks still to be set the tight end one in Dallas. He had a good year last year, lots of red zone targets. That's not going to change. And the 212 is a nice pick to get on top. Those are your five running backs you should be selling before the draft. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe, leave me your trade questions in the chat below. I will answer every single question. Hit the join button, hit the subscribe button. Loads more rookie content coming your way very soon.